the bulk of the projects in the book are uh, infill communities. They're um, re repairs and modifications to existing communities. Um, so, you know, to my mind, the real action is not with brand new places out in the middle of green fields, but what do we do to improve the places we're already living in through um, new, new development. Thank you for having me. And um, I'm really delighted to be able to speak to you tonight and, and really very honored to be working here in Arlington in the role of planning director. Arlington's a place that has an amazing reputation that I've admired for years, really, uh, as a mecca of smart growth and just generally a great place to spend time. Uh, I used to live in uh, Alexandria and uh, used to enjoy coming to Arlington. And I think in many ways Arlington is becoming more unique over time. You know, they used to both be the kind of A cities, sort of right next to each other. And, you know, you drive from one to the other, you don't really have a sense of what makes them different. But I think uh, Arlington in particular really has developed a very really unique character, both uh, architecturally, but certainly for the reputation of its citizens being very active and very engaged. And so um, I'm, I'm very delighted to be part of all that. Um, uh, I wanted to comment only briefly, but uh, and then hopefully open the floor up to your questions. I'm, I'm hoping Steve's going to stick around because he's got a lot more what I call institutional memory of what's really been going on here over the years. Um, the focus of my comments deals with the nexus between these two ideas I just mentioned, smart growth, or some people call it new urbanism, and this notion of great place, because they really are one and the same. Uh, smart growth, which sounds like an academic idea, it really is just a fancy word for creating great places. Uh, years ago, much of the Rosin Balsam corridor that we know today existed simply as a series of bullseye circles on a projected metro line that a few of your civic leaders were struggling to convince the federal government should be built down the middle of Clarendon Boulevard instead of down I-66. You know, a, a, a little idea, but a big concept. Uh, today, that diagram of those bullseyes really is a truly vibrant and unique community. Um, I recently watched an hour-long video called Arlington's Path to Smart Growth. Who's seen that in the group? Okay, I really recommend it. Um, it's pretty incredible. I actually watched it only after I had, had sort of inked the deal to come here. And after I watched this video, I thought, well, this is a pretty cool place to be coming to. What it told me is that the idea of progressive planning is not a new idea in Arlington. Folks have been practicing it for decades. Um, you see footage in the movie of these young whippersnappers wearing their Mad Men, you know, their narrow neckties and their kind of 60s suits. And, um, uh, in one frame, and then you know, in the next frame, you see a person talking, and the voice sounds eerily familiar. It's the same person 50 years later commenting on the wisdom of the strategies that, that were followed. Um, the sense from their reflections as older Arlingtonians that seeing what had been built in the ensuing years since the metro uh, was first sighted there, they felt that all those early years of pushing so hard for what they believed in made sense and was well worth the effort. That vision, in my mind, was really the first contemporary manifestation of something we planners call transit-oriented development, or TOD. Again, another somewhat academic term. And, you know, in, in the book, there's a few projects here that they're called TODs, and it is that same idea of that spring of pearls along the railroad line. Uh, and a lot of the earliest streetcar suburbs, they built the rail line first, and then they built the community. But the notion of coming in after the fact and retrofitting. So realizing that concept of TOD involved a number of steps. There was that initial notion, the big diagram, uh, and then uh, understanding what's happening within those bullseyes. What, you know, what's the urban design like? How do the streets and blocks lay out? What buildings go where? There was also a big step required. The, the city, the county was required to write a check for $2 million, $200 million, and that's in 1960s dollars, ultimately to convince the Fed to do it the way Arlington wanted. I mean, at the end of the day, it came down to dollars and cents. Um, and that was a big investment. Uh, so then ultimately writing the zoning that would achieve the, the density to make this concept happen at the bullseyes, ultimately negotiating the approval of the density with communities that live nearby. And, you know, folks, um, a lot of that fabric was single-family homes, so a lot of those folks, you know, were rather territorial and, and, and perhaps a bit prickly about the notion of all that intensity and activity coming in close to them. And then ultimately guiding the build-out, sector plan by sector plan, site plan by site plan, uh, as many of those lots have been developed. And that really is the work of 
the commission, the board, um, you know, we watching it up close. I mean, each each project that comes to realization does so with a great deal of thought and deliberation by lots of different folks, by the commissions, by citizens. Um, and uh, ultimately, that's what created the Roslyn Boston Corridor of today. From a purely functional standpoint, looking at it as a planner, Arlington is operating in all the ways that a healthy community should. As the physical patterns that planners drew get ever more defined as they get built out, the place just seems to get better. Um, my own sense, you know, the area here, the uh, uh, Radnor Fort Myer Heights, I remember driving up 50 um, as recently as 10 years ago, kind of looking at the hillside, thinking it was a kind of a, a, a real random assemblage of some old 1950s motels, some big high rises, some smaller buildings. It, it didn't seem to really come together. And then recently, in my first few weeks working at Arlington County, coming out of their garage and trying to make my way, try to figure out how to get onto 50, because it's not all that easy, but driving through the neighborhood, looking around and going, whoa, this place is looking pretty good. It, it, it was reminding me of San Francisco, uh, one of the places I've had the pleasure of living in my life. But really, um, some pretty cool buildings, some pretty, you know, some pretty great urbanism beginning to happen that really didn't feel like the old fusty Arlington that I remember. It really felt pretty fresh and, and, and um, pretty cool. So, but in that process of urbanizing, <coughs> there's often bumping of elbows as some parts of the county urbanize. Uh, what's amazing to me is how just a few blocks away from some of the most intense parts of the RB corridor is that great quality of life that Arlington's Tonians are very proud of the quiet tree-lined streets, a lot of them predominantly single-family homes um, that citizens speak so passionately about. So they have the benefit. You know, there's the benefit of density here, but uh, more conventional single-family um, settlement patterns just a few blocks away, which gives great variety. Parents there are walking their kids to nearby schools and preschools, some of the best rated in the, in the country. Other parents walking to Metro, and of course, some people driving, for sure. Um, prosperous neighborhood-based businesses. People seem to be happy here in, in, in the corridor, and indeed much of Arlington. And folks seem to get it when it comes to concepts of smart growth, understanding the new DNA of the community. There's been a lot of heavy lifting over the years though, to, to accomplish this. There's a steep learning curve that other communities really struggle with, understanding these concepts. A huge amount of the credit, I think, for this learning curve needs to go to elected and appointed officials, um, disseminating and, and, and really filtering concepts uh, through a much larger constituency, and also staff. My boss, uh, my predecessor, and my current boss, Bob Brosnan, who's been with the county for, I think, 25, 30 years, has really been at the forefront of this process of education, and also building up an amazing staff that I've inherited. Um, I'm just getting to know them, but from what I'm learning so far, they're a pretty impressive group. <clears throat> um, you know, one of, the, um, one of the really important points and key goal for my work is that as we do our work, um, conflict comes up. And, you know, staff's job is not to avoid conflict, not to run from it, but to really manage it to a positive outcome, to work with folks uh, to help that learning curve along. And part of that is, you know, rules and regulations, which are key to maintaining great places. I was asked if, uh, when I first came here to do a presentation for the Planning Commission. And um, coming up from Florida, where it was almost mandatory to, to include at least one or two Bible quotes in every lecture, I decided I'd kind of take the opposite tack and shock the Planning Commission a little bit. So I included a quote that I love about planning, but it actually comes from the Bible. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. I'm not a Bible scholar, so I can't tell you much about the context of that passage, but the reason why I like it is it talks about the two parts of planning. The importance of vision on the one hand. You know, if you don't have it, everyone dies. The people perish. That's pretty strong language. Um, but the flip side is regulation. He that keepeth the law happy is he. So not only do you not perish, but you'll actually be happy if you follow the rules. I suspect the real reason why you're happy is because the other guy's following the rules. <laughs> but regardless of that detail, um, it really adds up to the same thing. In, in a civil society, there are two things going on. There's vision formation happening, and, uh, and not just every other week or, or every year, but on an ongoing basis. And at the same time, 
you and your fellow citizens are relied upon to follow the rules. It, it's just the two sides of the same coin. A very simple, time-honored concept, uh, but I think the, the, the passage has relevance today here in Arlington. Um, on the vision side, it's important for us in government to be visionary, or, or if we can't be visionary, at least let's create the space for you all to be, and to facilitate that process. Um, uh, our board member, Mary Hines, is um, uh, her, one of her big themes for the year is, is an initiative called PLACE, which is really about citizen outreach and how to really, uh, you know, we talk all about the Arlington Way, but what does that really mean? How do we realize that? And how do we realize that consistently? Um, but so having created the vision, the way you realize that vision is through regulation with prediction, pre precision and predictability once the vision is codified. Um, sometimes matters of regulation get confused. When I say precision, <clears throat> I've got to be able to say it. Precision and predictability, what I mean is clearly stated, consistently applied regulations that as much as possible avoid discretionary oversight that applicants and some citizens consider to be a bit irksome. But because we regulators can't anticipate every situation, some regulatory matters do have to be handled on a discretionary basis. But that's risky, as our county attorney tells us all the time. Uh, because each situation is a special case, it's much more time consuming for us to justify each decision, document them, I'm also coming to appreciate Arlington's unique approach to planning, which includes a great amount of negotiation related to public amenities. Um, my sense is that the right balance between the, the uh, clearly stated and codified regulations that set a context up front, here are our expectations, and then some issues where negotiation and discretionary oversight just has to come into play. So finding the balance between that, finding that sweet spot, is important. And again, every local jurisdiction approaches this a little diff differently and I need to learn the Arlington balance. Uh, again, I'm very big on the vision side. Uh, I want to make sure we have plenty of opportunity to incorporate the vision as we continue to flesh out those bullseye circles that someone drew on a map 50 years ago. Your organization is going to be a valuable partner to us as we think about this upcoming Roslyn sector plan update. Um, you know, we're looking at places that were planned in earlier times. As planners, it's always very important for us to establish the legitimacy of our plans by looking at earlier plans and the ones that preceded them and, uh, and building a case to you know, say this was enabled by a prior ordinance. But sometimes those earlier plans just weren't that great because ideas have changed in planning. Uh, um, a lot of the concepts I wrote about here were really a critique of 1950s and 60s planning that was promoting low density, that was um, advocating a lot of the windswept plazas that really looked great in renderings but didn't ultimately become great places. Um, we're able to have the luxury of thinking about all this today because the Roslyn Boston corridor and this area really are in many ways products of, of good planning. They're, they're very well loved, uh, but a lot of love went into their, their creation. Um, people come here are self-selecting to be here because they like the way it looks and feels. And that becomes a, a great virtuous cycle. So by additional people coming here, they're adding, you are adding to, and you're contributing to the vitality. But with new people comes tensions around greater density and the impacts of that. And, uh, but I think it also brings people's desire to make a great place even better and to go to that next level of excellence. So in terms of the planning division, I'm personally, but, but all of our staff is really looking forward to working with you as we continue to build on that virtuous cycle.